On this episode of the Nugget Project, we're going to change out our valve stem seals. Alrighty guys, so here's the first episode on getting this puppy back on the road and back to its former glory. Um, before we get stuck into the valve stem seals, the first thing I had to do was remove the ECU. Um, there's a problem with these ECUs of this generation, especially this age, where the capacitors actually start breaking down and leaking, uh, which then causes all sorts of electrical gremlins. Um, and I'm finding in, in this car, it goes great. Like one time it'll be an absolute rocket ship, and the next time I go to uh, put my foot down, nothing happens. Like it seems to retard the timing of a four grand. Um, this could also be tied in with our VVTi solenoid, which I've got a new one as, of those as well. Um, but yeah, we're gonna get that. We've got that ECU actually sent off to our mate Justin in Ballarat, and he's gonna fix it up, which is fantastic. Um, and hopefully that fixes some of our electrical gremlins. But let's not bore you with all that. Let's get started. Um, first of all, basically, we just need to get all this junk out of the way in the engine bay. So we're gonna take out the uh, radiator, the thermofan, all the pipes and all the covers around the top of the um, cylinder head and also get to our timing belt because we need to mark that up and then take it off so we can get our cams out. Let's do it. Alrighty, so we got to the part where I pulled off the intake pipe and um, I think I found my smoking problem. So if we can just uh, look at the turbo there. Uh, that's fine. That is not fine. So it's got no lateral movement, but it's moving in and out, which is bizarre. This is a uh, Chinesium turbo um, and it was going really well. And as you can see, it's got no movement and it was boosting fine and everything. But now it's got this crazy play backwards and forwards, so it's like something's collapsed in there. One of the bushes or something. I don't know. Anyway, I do have another turbo under the bench, which is an old uh, original one from this engine that my mate gave me. Um, like a stock turbo, sorry. Um, and I'm pretty sure it's okay, so we'll check that out. But uh, yeah, that one's got to come off and uh, be replaced. But even though that's probably the reason the car's smoking, I still want to do the valve stem seals in here because this engine has about 230,000 on it and they're probably getting pretty old and pretty hard. So while we've got the seals, we've got the kit, we may as well just keep on going and get that done. Anyway, let's get this turbo off and uh, figure that out. Alrighty, I skipped ahead guys because you don't need to see the whole turbo coming out thing. That's not what this video is about, but uh, Here's our one we just took out, and yeah, God, look at this. Shagged. I'm gonna pull it apart and see what's going on with that. Um, they're my oil lines, so I'm just gonna give them a soak in petrol, make sure they're all clear, but they seem pretty good. I'm pretty sure this just collapsed because it's Chinesium. Um, here is our stock unit. You can see it's a lot smaller, um, but being Toyota, it's probably pretty efficient, and we're gonna put this back on, which will be fine for now. Later on, I'll get something bigger, but Turbos aren't cheap guys, so I don't really have the funds for that right now. I'd love to do a top mount and all that stuff, but once you've gone manifold, turbo, dump pipe, induction, then you've got to deal with fueling and everything, you're into the lots and lots of thousands, so I'm not going to do that right now. Anyway, I do have to move a lot of this stuff over. I've got to move my, you know, my studs for my manifold, I've got to move my wastegate pipes, this sort of stuff, just heaps of stuff all the all the studs for the dump pipe need to be moved over so and i want to give it a clean too you can see it's pretty uh pretty filthy in there from wherever it's been parked up so we're going to give that a good scrub out um make sure the oil gallery is all clean and then prime it with some fresh oil and we'll pop it back in cool so we just massively glossed over that whole thing but uh yeah the replacement turbo is in all bolted up i haven't put the dump pipe back on yet because i need to take the gearbox off to do the clutch so i may as well just leave that off and leave some room um 
Yeah, look, I don't know. This turbo is pretty old. I don't know how good it's going to be, but it's going to be much better than the crappy Chinese one I just pulled off it. Um, just to explain myself on that one, basically this, when the car was my daily, um, the turbo, the old turbo went um, pretty bad in a big cloud of smoke. And so I needed to get to work. And so I ordered the Kinagawa Chinese thing on eBay and bolted on. And to be honest, it was good for years, but uh, obviously it's just fallen in a big heat now. Um, during that time, I gave my old turbo to uh, the legend Kurt, who builds all the wicked dump pipes and stuff for these cars. Um, he used it to mock stuff up. Um, and then I hit him back up. I said, hey, man, have you uh, got a turbo laying around? He's like, oh, I've got a few. I'll just send you the best one. So thus, that's where that turbo came from. Um, I don't know if it's my original one. I don't think so. It looks in slightly better condition. It's obviously not blowing smoke. Um, the old one was very rattly, and this one's only got a tiny bit of movement. So I don't think it's my original. Um, yeah, but anyway, I moved everything over, cleaned everything up, flushed the lines, made it all nice and pretty, put it back in there, and now we are ready to continue on with what this video was intended to be about, is doing our valve stem seals. So, we'll um, get our bottom pulley off. So, a lot of people have trouble with these. Um, I did mine up to talk spec when I redid my timing about not long ago, and yeah, this came off with a rattle gun, as it should. You shouldn't have to use a breaker bar and try and start the car and all that sort of stuff because that's disgusting and yeah anyway but yeah I did up the spec and it came off with a rattle gun uh, and now I've just got to grab a, my pulling set and pull this uh, bottom pulley off um, and then we'll get the timing belt off I think I'm going to mark all this up nice and neat so we can see it and obviously uh, we'll use our timing marks on our all our cogs but we might as well mark the belt up so we've got double things to make sure everything's going to go in the right spot. So we'll do all that, get our rock cover off, and um, have a look at these valve stem seals. Let's go. Sorry about the light guys, I've got sunlight pouring in and no light in the garage. This is why I hate working from home. I'd rather be at my dad's shed where we've got plenty more room, but you know, I'm not allowed to leave the house apparently. So we'll deal with what we got. Um, I just want to show you this. So this is obviously our timing belt. Now we've got our timing marks here. Um, zoom in, you can see the mark on the cam there and then we've got the mark here. I've put white pen on it, but there's actually like a lump in the housing there. Same with this side, same with here. Now down on the bottom cam, oh, it's so hard. Let me get some light on the subject so we can see what we're doing. Let's put our trusty Wyobi light in here a bit. Okay, oh, it's gonna be hard for you guys to see, but there's a little notch there. Um, you can see there's a little divot in the bottom uh, sprocket, cog, whatever you want to call it. And then there's that tiny dot on the water pump housing, or the oil pump housing, I should say, just above it. So that means the engine is at top dead center. And as long as that's all lined up, your timing is fine on this engine. But because we're taking this belt off, and we know it's all lined up, but we're going to reuse the belt. What I'm going to do, you can see up here, is we'll mark the actual belt with those timing marks. And then that gives us another point of reference to make sure that everything's lined up. But sometimes these tensioners don't line up or something's a bit weird. And at least we've got another point of reference there that if it's not lined up, something is astray. It's a bit harder with the bottom pulley, bottom uh, cog, because we don't have a, a reference mark. But we're just going to line, we'll draw one on the cog and then we'll draw one on the belt. And that just gives us some reference points. And when we put our belt back on, just to make sure everything's right. This is an interference engine, I'm pretty sure. Um, I don't know, I've never had the head off it, but uh, yeah, with interference engines like my little Subaru here, if, um, if the belt slips or it's not in time, then your valves hit your pistons, which has happened to a previous Subaru of mine due to a faulty tensioner, um, and then you have to pull the heads off, new valves, new everything, hopefully no new pistons, it's a nightmare. Um, so we don't want any of that. So we'll mark this up and then we can uh, take our tensioner off and get our belt off. All 
Alrighty, cam covers are off and there's our beautiful cams. Um, something else I need to replace while I'm in here. This little guy here is a VVTi uh, solenoid. So this is the part that it's got an oil pressure feed in here and basically um, changes the timing on the intake cams um, as you go through the rev range to give you more power. Um, these do clog up after time, the seals go bung, things go wrong. You can rebuild them. However, it's not that expensive to buy a new one, which is exactly what I did. So we uh, put in an order with our friends at Golby's and got this little guy here. So it looks pretty, I've never done one of these, but it looks super duper easy to change because there's just a bolt that holds it on the top there and it looks like the whole thing just slides out and you just put the new one in. So I think, obviously the problem being is our throttle body's in a way, so we'll have to pop the throttle body off, which isn't a huge deal. Um, so we will do that, but I've got to take the cams and everything out anyway, so all this, I guess, has to come off. So, um, we'll see, because that whole assembly might come off with the cam, um, as well, so we might not have to take the throttle body off. But we'll start pulling stuff apart and see what happens. So what I'm going to do here, guys, is I've got one of my daughter's nappy boxes here. Um, I don't know if any of these bolts are different sizes or lengths or anything, so to not risk any um, mess up or confusion, I'm going to basically draw, this is the front, and this is going to be our engine, and that's the exhaust, it's the intake, and I'm going to basically unscrew these, I'm going to push the bolts and the caps through this box, and they can sit exactly how they do in the engine. And that way we know we can pull them back out and put them back on exactly the same way we took them off. So this is our valve stem replacement kit from Max Peating Rods the uh, dodgy website that sells all the uh, questionable quality parts. But I think some of the tools are pretty cool and they're cheap. This was hundred bucks um, and it comes with everything. So basic idea, so we've got a lot of stuff in here. We've got all the air uh, tool bits, which we can put in the spark plug hole and pressurize our cylinder to stop the valve falling in. Then we have these parts, which is the actual levers to lever our spring off. Then we've got a little magnetic uh, thing to get our keepers. And then we've got all sorts of tools to install the new Valsam seals. So it's actually quite a complex kit. Not bad for a hundred bung. Um, I don't want to spend a lot of money on this because it's not something I'm going to do very regularly. So I'll show you how to sort of set this all up. It's a generic kit. It's not made for 1J. It's made for everything. So it's never going to fit perfect. But uh, yeah, we'll make this um, fit on the engine. I'll show you how to do it. Okay, so I haven't bolted this sucker in yet, but here's the short and curly of it. So, with our bracket here, we bolt them into the holes that the uh, camshaft caps go into. Um, and then we slide this bar in at the right point. This is our lever bar, and we've got a little pivot pin, and then this is the part that obviously pushes down the spring. I've still got my shim and buckets in there, so I'm not pushing down it yet. But basically, once that's all in there, you can pull down on that, it'll lever off this, compress our spring and then you can see there's a hole inside there and we use this little guy with the magnet to grab our um, collets off the top of the valve lift it up and then we should be able to take our valve spring and cap out and that'll leave um, levers exposed to get to the um, valve stem seal sorry it's late in the day I'm starting to lose my brain um, now to stop the valve falling into the piston, we take out our um, spark plug and then we use an adapter. We've got this guy here and that's actually got a Schrader valve in it like a car tire. So we can wind that into a spark plug hole and actually pump up the, piston, the cylinder and hopefully as long as your rings aren't shagged, that should keep pressure in there and keep the valve from falling in. But what we're going to do to just to make sure um, the valve doesn't fall too far in, is we're gonna turn our crank round, we'll put a screwdriver in the spark plug hole, and we'll turn it round until that screwdriver shows that piston at top dead center, and then even if the valve falls in, it's just gonna go clunk and tap down on the piston and not fall into the engine. Um, which I don't think it can anyway with the length, but why risk it? 
So we're going to do that, and then um, yeah, we can change our stem seals. So I'll film the first one, but you don't want to watch all of these because it's uh, four valve, four valve per cylinder, and six cylinders. That's a lot of stem seals, and it's going to take me a long time. I think I'm going to be here for quite a few hours. So we'll film the first one, and then um, you've got the gist. Let's set up a little rig here. What I've got is my, um, I've got some little washers here. So the, um, the inserts here where the cam caps bolt down, you can see they're metal inserts obviously because it's an alloy head and they stick up a bit proud. So I've just got these washers that are just going to make this not sit so rickety on those. And we'll figure out the best place to put our do is I think we go there and there alrighty now we run our bar through and because it's got all these holes we can obviously adjust where the bar sits we we'll just stick it through there for a second and have a look okay so I've popped our little uh, pusher thingamabob in the lever with just the pin there and if we pop that in there, that all lines up nicely with our valve. Uh, if you guys can see that. So that's good. So we can take our bucket and shim out. Now I've had a little bit of a rethink about um, how I'm gonna do this. So I do have the kit with the air compressor so I can run compressed air into the cylinders to hold the valves open. Um, but I'm not gonna use that for a couple of reasons. One is most of the kits I saw online do not have any of the air compressor tools um, so I'm going to show you how to do it without that and secondly my air compressor is being a pain in the ass today it's got a bunch of leaks and it's being a dick and I just don't want to use it so I figure now's a good time to use the old rope trick so this is just some nylon rope that I have cleaned but I will clean again before it goes in there and the idea of this is we use a spanner on our crank and we'll put a screwdriver down the hole of cylinder one and we put the cylinder all the way down and then we feed our rope in clean rope into the cylinder until there's a bunch in there and then we wind that to push our piston back up and then that rope will basically gather in the cylinder pushing up against our valves and then when we push down on that the valve will push down on the rope not the piston and that'll give us something to push against so we can get our collets out and then our springs and then do our valve stem seals. And that is essentially the rope trick. Um, I've got mates who are professional mechanics and use the rope trip all the time, um, just so they don't have to run the compressor all the time or if the engine's a bit old and it's leaking uh, and not sealing very well, this is a easy way to do it. So we're gonna give it a go. I've never done it. Let's have a crack. Okay, so we'll take our bar out, give it to him for a second. Now, needless to say, guys, when you're working with stuff where things can fall in your engine, be as clean as possible. Clean everything, all the time. Um, you don't want junk in your engine. It sucks. It's going to ruin it. All right, so I've just got... I, I had that in the spark plug hole to stop anything falling in. Now we've got our long extension for our socket, and we pop that down, and that will be sitting on top of the piston. So now... I've got my handle down here. We'll see that extension move up and down. There we go. So that's now moving down. So now we can pop out our extension and start feeding our rope into the spark plug hole. All right, so that's back up at TDC. Our rope's all fed in there. Now it's time to try and get these valves out. And then we need to take out <clears throat> our bucket. So we use a little magnet and grab that bucket and that should slide out. I'm gonna do all these one at a time. So I'm gonna take that out and I'm gonna put it aside and then I'm gonna do this one and then it's all gonna go back in exactly the same way. So I'm not taking them all out. Just one at a time, and I know exactly the order everything has come out, and we'll go back in. Perfect. Now we'll get our 
believe up. See that lever there? And when you push down, hopefully, we'll see the valve hit the rope. There we go, popped it down. The first collet came out. And the second collet, there we go, they're both out. Do not lose them, for the love of God. Now we can pull our lever out of the way. And there's our valve spring. We go. I hope you guys can see this. I might film another one for you because the sun's a bit bright. So we put our valve spring over here too. And inside there is our valve snoom seal. So the cool thing with this kit, which I know a lot of them don't, but you can use long nose pliers and stuff, is it comes with these valve stem grabber rays. So we put that down, we grab our valve stem and Yeet him out of there, and then we can. Uh, we've got some tools to put a new one in, so let's have a crack at it. Uh... All right, I'll put these down here, and we grab onto a valve stem seal and give him a bit of a oh no, hit the camera. But there we go. Our stem seal is out. Ripper. God, this is terrible camera work, guys. I really do apologize. It's so hard doing this myself. I'm usually filming somebody else doing this. Alrighty, guys, so here are our new valve stem seals from GRP Engineering. Now, probably it's very hard to tell on this camera, but can you see the size difference of those holes? That's what uh, 250,000 odd kilometers does to a valve stem seal. I mean, this is new and it's very elastic, but you can just see like this one isn't springing back at all. It is shagged. And when you look at it on the valve, valve stem, it's just loose. And no wonder it's probably not helping the smoking situation. So yeah, these are our new ones and these are definitely the white ones. Um, we got them from a very reputable source with Golbys. So uh, yeah, we'll pop the new guys in. Now one issue we have is at the top of the valve stem seal, there is obviously the, the indent where the collets sit to hold the, uh, the spring on. Now you can get a little tool that sits over the top or a little straw so it doesn't damage the seal. I don't have anything like that so I'm just going to lube these up with a bit of oil and hopefully we can slip them on without uh, causing too much damage. <laughs> it's definitely going to be better than that shag puppy. Okie dokie, so now we've got a new valve stem steel. This is the tool we use to uh, put it in. So in the kit we've got oh, about six or seven different size of these adapters on the end. This just screws into this bar and this bar is hollow. And with our new valve stem seal, it fits in there. Perfect, nice and snug. So we can run that down the, um, down the valve and then push this on and give it a light tap with the hammer just to make sure it's seated. Just pop a bit of oil on it first and then that is the new valve stem seal on. Then we can reverse the process and get our collets back in, which is the crap part. Let's have a crack. Alrighty, so I've got some oil on the new valve stem seal. And we'll carefully pop it on, there we go. There we go, you can hear that start to go solid, means it's all the way down, and that's it. So I've got our spring and cap, so you pop him back on there. So now you can see we get our handle in there. I've got to say the connection here is just poxy, I had to put a file in it to make it work, but I mean, I guess that's what you get for a hundred buck tool, isn't it? It's not going to be super quality. Okay, so that's going to compress our spring. And now we need our keepers or collets or whatever you want to call them. And this is the hard part. We do not want to drop these somewhere shit. Okay, got to be super careful. And I'm probably going to do that now I've said it. And also make sure they've got a taper on them. 
So the larger taper goes to the top and the smaller taper goes to the bottom. So let's give this a compress and see what we can do. From my experience doing this with a different type of spring compressor, you can usually get them sitting carefully just in the top. And just place your finger over it. Come on, go. Because they will sit in that top cup fine. But as soon as you compress, the valve stem is going to try and push them out. So you get them in there. Get your finger in over the top. Compress. Uh, uh, there we go. it and it's in let's make sure they're sitting in there properly and that is back in boys and girls that's not that hard with those collets I saw I watched videos of this being done and everyone's like oh it's impossible to get them back in if you just sit them in the top pull down and then just hold them with your finger and then just guide them in while you're holding it down. They will just slot in and as you release it up slowly, they'll clip into place and that's it. That's, that's how we do it. So it wasn't that hard. I, as I said, I haven't done it this way. I've only ever done it with the cylinder head off. Um, and that's nowhere near as hard as I was expecting. I was watching all these videos, all these horror stories. I was freaking out going, it took me 45 minutes to get those colts back in. You're like, really? Honestly, that was the first take. Like, it's not that hard. Just take your time, do it systematically. Um, I'll show you a little bit of the next one and then I think you can just time up to rest so you get the idea. In fact, if you're joining just to see how this is done, you've probably already turned off. So. <laughs> so anyway, we'll do the rest of this and then we can get everything, get the cams back in and get this engine back together and move on to something a bit more fun. Okay, let's go. So lever in, line it all up, it's good to go. And then we get our magnets. This is a bit of a compress. I did notice when I compressed it. It did kind of pop because the collets, the, the, whatever you call them, I'm calling them collets, but they're, Collets or um, valve spring keepers, they do get a bit stuck. So when you push, they do kind of pop like so. Make sure our magnet's close by. There we go. There's both the keepers. Put them somewhere very safe. Let that up slowly. And we can take this away. And then pop out our valve. There we go. Now is out. Now we get our special tool. Our grabbers. These are actually pretty good. They're, they're terribly made, but um, definitely better than using long nose pliers because at least it's the shape of the valve stem. And when you go down there, make sure you're not grabbing anything that isn't the valve stem seal. You just want the seal itself. Give it a little wiggle. It's been on there for a long time. And there we go. That is our valve stem seal. This one is also clapped out. All right, I've got a fresh one here. I've just trenched it in some oil. Now, as I said, there is a tool you can use. So they don't get damaged popping over that, but I don't have one and it's my car, so it's my fault if I damage them. And push that down. And get our hammer. Don't be a brute, just give it a light tap. And you hear that pitch change. And that is now home. Pop that off, and that's our valve stem seal installed. Looks good. Now we can stick our 
bring and cap back in. Okay. There we go. So just run that there. Pop that down. That's good to go. And we very carefully. Uh, keepers in there. Sorry, I think my hand is completely blocking the camera. There we go, make sure they're the right, right way around. So, small taper to the bottom. As I said, they will fit. Oh my god, go in. Very fiddling, you don't want to be two ham hands with this because if they flick off into your engine bay it's all over. So now we just hold our finger over as we compress and one side usually falls in. I have to swap hands. There we go. And they are in. Let's get you unraveled. So there we go. They're in. What I'm going to do is just pop our bucket back on top. Done. And that's it. So I've shown you a couple now. You kind of get the idea. It's not that hard. Just um, something I didn't do in that last one, which I probably should have done is make sure your magnet is close by because when you pull down that lever and they release, they can pitting everywhere. So make sure your magnet's handy. One uh, quick little thing I wanted to mention, guys, is um, it's been a long week for me. It's my first day off in quite a while, so I'm a little bit sleepy. Um, so what I'm doing is I'm just using a bit of masking tape and just putting a dab of tape next to the ones I've done. I know it's a silly thing, I should remember, but just with how my brain is at the moment, this way I just remember those two are done, now I can move over to those two, do those, and I'll just mark them off as I go. Okie dokie, so my camera died and uh, the time lapse only went halfway, but I'm finished. So we've got um, all of these changed out, and yeah, it wasn't too bad, it was, it was not a bad process. The exhaust side is much easier, obviously, because we've got a lever, We've got a lot of room around here with the intake side with the induction manifold still on um, obviously the lever kind of clashes with a lot of the induction manifold which can make it a bit of a pain in the ass i did have to take a few of these brackets off as i went along but i did find um here's our lever here you'll notice it's set up a bit different we can use that end pin there and you can actually i haven't got this bolted down i've just put it back on just to show you guys this is you can actually loop it round that way and then you pull up on the lever and that'll compress it so that means obviously the lever won't clash on the induction manifold um, so you can run it that way around too uh, which isn't bad so you, you know you've got a lot of adjustment here so just play around and see what works best for you but um yeah honestly it, it wasn't too bad a process um little bits of advice from me after doing this just be so careful with those collets. Do not drop them. I didn't. I was very careful with them. But <laughs> the problem I did have is I was worried about dropping one of those collets down the oil galleries because if you have a look, um, all these are return channels that go all the way down to the sump. So I didn't want to drop one down there. What did happen though is this stupid tool. You know how I mentioned this pin? So this pin is loose. There's no way of securing it. And when I tilted the tool out, it went like that, and one of these pins fell down that oil gallery there, which sucks. So I'm now going to have to uh, figure out, it's gone all the way down, so I'm going to try and put a long magnet down, see if I can hook it and bring it back up, otherwise I'm going to probably have to pull the sump off, because this sump, I'm pretty sure has a plate where the oil drops onto, the oil runs and then drops down into the sump. So it's not a matter of just picking up out of sump. I'll probably have to take the sump off, which is not the end of the world, but it's a step I didn't want to have to do. So we're going to try with the magnet first, but anyway, be very careful. Do not drop this sucker. It sucks. Great success, gang. I get a rig, my little grabber thingy, and cut the magnet off the end of the, uh, the duvet that came with that kit. 
drilled a hole through it, wired it together, taped it, put it down there, and I got the sucker out. Stoked. Okay, so from here on in, we're pretty much just putting it back together the opposite of the way we took it apart. So it's not that exciting. Um, here it is now, and we'll skip forward to it all being done. And just like that, it's back together. It's the next day. Um, I kind of got stuck into it last night and uh, got everything back together. It's really not that bad. So um, basically put the camshafts in. Um, I screwed them down. It started with the middle. You got to screw them down nice and evenly. Because you got to remember that a couple of the valves will be um, will be compressed and nodes will push down. So you need to just make sure the the shafts go down nice and evenly and don't jam because they can jam up and damage things, especially with the alloy head. So just take your time with that. Um, and then I took them down a spec. I found an old uh, Japanese manual for 1JZ and found the torque settings for those. It was in Japanese, as I said, but uh, the torque settings are in English, which is fantastic. Um, and then we put our uh, cam uh, gears on and, and then we took them up to spec. So that guy and there's the, the bolt inside there and that one. So we did those um and then timed it up so we just put our tensioner back on there's two bolts there and the bolts just go up and that'll tension it you can recompress the tensioner and put a pin in it i couldn't find a pin so i just basically screwed it back up and then uh yeah spin it a few times make sure everything keeps timing up you know you spin it a few times and then check time timing timing it's all good if you're happy with that that's great um, and then put my balancer back on and that just got about 15 ugga duggers with the impact driver and Good as gold. Um, so obviously now I just need to put the cover on and the two covers for the cam, but that's just about it. That is done. So hopefully you guys learned how to do your own uh, valve stem seals. It's really not that hard. I think on a Subaru it'd probably be a bit of a bitch um, in the engine bay, but um, any other car, it's really not that hard. That kit was hundred bucks. This whole thing cost me forty dollars for the valve stem seals and hundred bucks for that kit. So it's it's a super cheap. Thing to do if i gave this to a mechanic i guarantee you that would be a two thousand dollar job 100 percent um just remember i did my water pump my timing belt my tension and my idlers not that long ago on this car so they're all quite new they're only about sort of thirty thousand k old they're not that old if you're doing this yourself and your engine has done a few k's do it all while you're in there like honestly save up get your new camshaft seals, get your new belt, get your new tension, a water pump, everything. Do it all while you're in there. It's gonna cost you a bit of money, but you only have to do it once and it's done. You don't have to pull it apart again. So uh, the only reason I didn't do it is because I did it recently and I know it's pretty good. Same with your um, cam covers, get your new cam cover seals, all that sort of stuff. Get it all done now. Do it once and then your car's gonna be great forever. Uh, cool, so that's all done. Um, I obviously I'm, haven't put the radiator and stuff in because I've got a cool project for this. We're going to be putting a thermo fan in this guy, getting rid of all the big mechanical fan setup, doing electric thermo fans with a controller box. Um, but that's all for the next episode, so check back. If you haven't subscribed, please subscribe. I know this isn't the most amazing video series filming-wise. Unfortunately, trying to work on a car and film at the same time is very hard. Um, but I'm trying to get something that's semi-interesting and informative for you. So if you like it, give me a thumbs up and a subscribe. I really appreciate it. And check back in the next episode for um, Thermo Fan Goodness. Cheers.